Can you make money with Palantir? And what's the best timing to start buying its shares? If I've decided to search on this topic and clicked on my video, chances are you have looked at the charts and are asking the same questions that many of us are having as well. Hello everyone, I hope you had an amazing day and lots of profitable trades. As we know, the job market over the past few years has been pretty rough and had a lot of ups and downs. Companies that were once considered as safe havens for those looking for employment have been reducing their workforces and sometimes chopping off entire departments. And it has been a traumatizing experience for many of those concerned, indeed. The inflation, on the other hand, has been rapidly increasing simultaneously and eating people's saving in countries and economies that have long been deflationary. I mean, when every source of certainty and assumption about the reality has been just, you know, poked away, we must use this opportunity to always remember that we need to take the step back and to start working about our own financial independence. In order to secure our own financial future, we got to find the next golden goose, the growth opportunities of tomorrow, and seize the ones that may multiply our capital exponentially, increasing the money available for investment later. Over the past few years, Palantir became such a company, or at least one of those companies. It became so much more than yet another tech companies, um, you know, collecting funding in exchange of promise of market growth. It is now a major player that has the role of canary down the coal mine. It has enough clout and mystery around it to arouse the market's curiosity, and people have a tendency to follow popular trends. You know, this is pretty convenient since Palantir also has a knack at finding and also convincing people that it is part of that very famous trend as well. The fact that Palantir may rise and fall with the tidal waves of risk capital is a limited but very useful uh, indication that may help us to predict where the market may go. And in this video, we're going to take a deep dive into Palantir and see whether it deserves to have a place in your portfolio. Before the video continues, I just want to take a moment to thank you for coming to my channel. I hope that you're going to enjoy your stay and to come back for more content. If you like what you see, please consider to like, subscribe, and check out my channel for playlists of the companies I cover. With that being said, I hope you're going to enjoy my analysis, and let's get started. Over the past few weeks, the market has seen like the investors trust in the Palantir going through a lot, a lot of ups and downs before finally coming back at pretty much the same place where the volatility is began. In fact, you know, that and then some. The current dynamics point towards a recovery after some profit taking that led to a mild sell off from 25 to 21. It's kind of important to remember that Palantir is a stock of momentums. And right now the market seems to be anticipating yet again that its price may go beyond the $25 level to eventually start challenging the $30 level. With that being said, we gotta see more evidence before saying that the bearish tendencies are finally behind us. The current consensus is that the sell-off pressure has a combination of motives behind it, including uh, like the recent announcement of Palantir's growth slowdown in the traditional public sector contracts area over the course of 2023. There are all like there's also some additional volatilities to be expected for the S&P 500 rebalance. And given all this, many saw these developments and used that opportunity to take some profit off and to maybe better position their their Palantir shares in the future, meaning they expect a market correction then come back at a better price. The market reacted as a result and is still in the process of correcting its expectation and digesting the news. And previously, the resistance levels have been identified at $25 with the stock struggling to surpass uh, that level. In fact, we may yet to see in the upcoming days whether that's going to happen. With the support levels at $23 or maybe sometimes even a bit lower providing more stability to the price movements. These levels serve as important markers for investors and indicate potential areas for price reversals or continuation. 
The short-term trends of Palantir stock appears to be moving sideways with a slight downward tendency. And this trend may be attributed to a decrease in both interest and volume of investors. The overall trend remains bullish, and the weakening momentum suggests a potential shift in the market sentiment. In terms of volume, the stock sees the trading volume like, you know, staying around 30 million shares a day, uh, peaking sometimes to 50 to 70 million shares with a 30 day average. That's like 30 five to 40 million shares a day and decreasing. So the data does suggest a decrease in both daily and average trading volume and a potential loss or at least a decrease or pause, if you will, of market interest. Palantir is currently experiencing a period of weakening momentum while maintaining a bullish trend like overall. The short term price movements do indicate a sideways pattern with a slight downward tendency influenced by the decreasing interest from investors showcased by the diminishing volume that we talked about earlier. The stock faces some resistance at like the $25 level and finds support in the large support zone between $20 and $23. These levels may yet fluctuate, but they prove to be pretty solid and choppy uh, support levels for any sort of short sell attempts. And this is why, if any, in my opinion, that Palantir did not have a significant sell off because we don't want to go against this. I don't know if you guys have traded Forex before. It's a bit like trading the USD JPY. So like the Japanese yen pair back then and going short against it, you know, even if the momentum may not be there, even if it took a very long time to have like a like a slow uh, grind downward, you may choose to not participate. You may choose to sit on the fence. But other than going long, you don't want to go short. And this is some something that I felt uh, with Palantir as well. People may sometimes lack the faith into where the stock may go next. It doesn't mean that they have enough conviction that it's going to go bad. So this is why any sort of uh, sell-off may be short-lived. So on a fundamental level, Palantir has always gathered a lot of interest from retail investors since its IPO. And if anything, this is kind of interesting. It might be one of the, um, one of the potential weaknesses for Palantir's long-term outlook. The fact that institutional investors have yet to own the majority of Palantir shares. It can be a sign that despite its solid business model and pretty reliable revenue streams, Palantir may be perceived to be a little bit too expensive by institutional capital. And this increased presence of retail investors also explains why Palantir is known to be a very volatile equity indeed. Ever since its debut in the secondary market, the sentiment has been Overwhelmingly, I don't want to say positive or negative, but reactive. Investors are eager to capitalize on all the trends and momentums, including the capital, like the company's innovative data analytics technologies on the way up, and also the wider tech sell off when wars occur on the way down. Palantir's journey in the stock market has also been characterized by prolonged but intermittent periods of bullish enthusiasm followed by like the sell-off um, dipping at one point below the ten dollars and if you guys remember it went below eight as well one significant aspect of palantir's price movement is the correlation between its fundamentals and the macroeconomic news cycles events like geopolitical uncertainty supply chain issues um, you know, in large economic sectors like cars, for example, cars, energy, that sort of stuff, uh, interest rate decisions or government regulations for narratives such as AI, data and innovation in general may have a pretty significant impact on the share price and simultaneously been affected by the company's own news regarding financial performances and guidance pricing from analytics. So on the other hand, the relevance of analyzing news, I have to say, is limited at the very best. 
It's often observed that news surrounding the company reflects the current price action or in fact confirms or finds reasons or excuses to justify the current price actions that maybe they didn't understand to begin with, leading to a pretty self-fulfilling prophecy scenario. When the stock is on an upward trajectory, positive news tend to dominate headlines and that may fuel like additional optimism. And in downturns, negative news amplify like the, um, the selling pressure and it's going to accelerate the downward trend. It probably goes for most stocks that you might be interested in as well. So the news articles may be interesting to confirm whether like where is the wind currently blowing but not the future direction. So as things currently stand now, I would say that Plenty has been able to maintain its bullish trend in the medium and the long term with somewhat diminishing marginal increase uh, over the short term. But of course, it's not certain, right? We got to still see what's going to happen on Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. While the stock has shown some resilience in the past sessions, well, in fact, a lot of resilience in the past sessions, the pace of its ascent um, has definitely slowed down somewhat, indicating a potential shift in sentiment amongst investors. And as such, there's a growing need for additional catalysts to sustain the bullish momentum and to propel the stock to new heights. One factor that could influence Palantir's future performance is its status as a large cap stock. With its market capitalization increasing, Palantir is poised to solidify its position amongst the market leaders. And large cap status often brings increased institutional involvement and interest as well. So this is definitely positive for the long term and sustained upside potential. Now, given its symbolic and size related significance, uh, investing in Palantir does come with its own opportunities, but challenges as well. There are, there are different levels of considerations that may influence the decision making process. And we're going to go through the main ones, in my view. One of the primary reasons people are drawn to Palantir is the growth potential. Uh, it's position, well positioned, in fact, into a sector that may at least look promising, data analytics, and they say that they're going to enter into yet another one that's very popular at the moment, the artificial intelligence one. So Palantir operates in the field with a lot of promises for the future economy, and as businesses increasingly rely on data-driven information to make decisions and to you know, optimize their own operations, companies like Palantir might be able to seize the opportunity and to capitalize on the trend. With the expertise in handling and analyzing large volumes of data, Palantir stands to benefit from the growing demand for data-centric solutions across various industries. Palantir's own financial stability is a pretty reassuring factor for investors. Many tech startups operate at a loss, but Palantir has already established a revenue-generating business model with net positive cash flows. So that reduces greatly the likelihood of shared dilutions just for capital-raising purposes. Um, providing and like That really provides investors with a sense of stability and confidence in the company's own financial health. Palantir has also demonstrated its ability to capitalize on pretty popular trends to, gen to like generate significant interest from the market, especially amongst the retail traders. Um, their strategic move to make partnerships and to like enter into AI means that they have the capacity uh, to enhance their visibility and appeal and how attractive they are for both individual and institutional investors. They can capture the market sentiment and leverage that sentiment to like their own advantage. And that further proves, if you will, that Palantir's potential for you know future growth and success is pretty large. But that being said, investing in Palantir also has its own risks and challenges. One potential concern for investors is the possibility for legal contingencies about the privacy and data ownership. And as a company, it deals with sensitive information. 
like Palantir may face regulatory scrutiny and legal challenges, a lot of them, which may adversely affect its operations and reputation. We actually saw some of that with the NHS. Like when they try to go with NHS, a lot of concerns were raised about what they're going to do and how they're going to handle the data that is inherently uh, private. So any negative news or developments in that front may significantly impact people's sentiment and the and I would say the valuation of the company. Also, it's like very reliant on the public sector for contracts. Government contract can be very lucrative. They can also be very stable, but they're also very uncertain in the sense that they might be subject to, you know, regulatory rotations or political um, and budgetary considerations. Agencies may cut back on budgets. They may choose arbitrarily to allocate such and such contracts to another one, to, to like another vendor. And sometimes Palantir themselves may want to may wanna keep data that they cannot or that is said that they cannot. For example, the, um, the data that they have with the U.S. Army, at one point they wanted to keep it. Uh, turns out they, they didn't. So there's also that. And also, there's another potential downside, but this one doesn't only affect Palantir, but Palantir as well. The possibility of a shift in the narrative away from analytics and AI. So they're certainly interesting and currently popular and high in demand, but we don't know where the changes are going to be, like the, the tech, like the tech innovations as well as the re, like the the regulations. We don't know how they're going to be perceived and accepted by the industry and more importantly by the investors behind that industry so if the market begins to favor yet other so right now the global markets are facing a complex interplay of factors that have the potential to significantly influence the equities worldwide in this speculative analysis i believe that the consequences of the global inflation surging commodity prices and decline quantitative easing, as well as the rise of inflation rates or interest rates, plus the geopolitical instabilities, are going to play a significant part. The increasing inflation rate has been putting pressures across the globe, threatening the purchasing power, raising the input costs, and impacting corporate profitability. Companies operating internationally may face challenges in managing rising production costs and also to sustain profit margins. Those dynamics could trigger market volatility as investors adjust their risk return expectations. The upward trajectory of commodity prices, including energy, metals, agricultural products, have been having far-reaching implications for various sectors of the global equities market. The companies heavily dependent on these commodities may experience squeezed profit margins, potentially affecting stock valuations and investor sentiment. The reduction or the end of QE's quantitative easing measures by the central banks worldwide may have resulted in reduced market liquidity. So this in turn could lead to higher borrowing costs for companies seeking capital, which may also discourage investment activities or will. The elevated market volatility plus the reduced investors' appetite may also continue to occur. Now, the central banks around the world are tackling this delicate situation of balancing the inflation rates with the economic stability and, if possible, growth. Central banks opted for aggressive interest rate hikes to combat inflation. Borrowing costs for companies have been rising, which has also slowed down business activities and also fueling the market's volatility in terms of the equity prices. Now, ongoing geopolitical tensions, including trade disputes, political uncertainties, and social unrests, will inject an additional element of volatility into the global markets. Investors may adopt a cautious approach, 
shifting towards safer assets, impacting the equities. Additionally, the escalating conflicts may disrupt supply chains, negatively impacting the performance of international companies. Given the interconnectedness of global markets, the aforementioned factors have reverberating effects on the U.S. equities market. Companies with significant exposure to international market may face a lot of headwinds resulting from the economic slowdowns, disrupting the supply chains and the currency fluctuations. But nevertheless, the U.S. market is known for its resilience and the diverse sectors may attract investors seeking safe havens. So really, the current landscape is characterized by global inflation, Surging commodity prices, surging commodity prices, reduced quantitative easing, rising central bank inflation rates, geopolitical instabilities, and also ongoing lack of certainty regarding growth. While the U.S. market may exhibit relative strength due to the safe haven status, it's going to remain interconnected with the global economic landscape. For long-term investors, these conditions may offer opportunities to identify undervalued companies with strong fundamentals and international diversification. That being said, short-term trades should be approached with caution because of the increased volatility and uncertainty. And also, we should be careful when assessing individual companies sectors or regions so at this point having said all this you know it's also time to have a conclusion what is my overall opinion about palantir i believe that i've shared this view um, over a number of days or a number of weeks already i believe that in the long run there's little doubt that palantir is going to remain relevant that it's probably going to grow of course there are risks ahead and nothing is 100 percent guaranteed But if you believe, and of course it's conditional to if you actually believe that, right? You may not. But if you believe that AI and um, data analytics are going to remain relevant on the NASDAQ and in the economy of tomorrow, then I would say that that it's a pretty good choice to have some of your exposure into into Palantir. I mean, I almost want to say it cannot really go wrong that that's how that's how much faith i actually have in um in in palantir on the other hand if you if you're not sure whether these technologies are going to be relevant in the years to come which by the way there are good reasons for it you know it's similar to how way back when uh people were saying that oh like st- stuff like stuff like um Stuff like EVs are going to take over the world. Well, is it going to, right? Oh, fintech is going to take over the world. Has it? So it's because of all this that I would say um, we should always keep a leveled head and to never take things too much for granted. It's not because they're popular now that they're going to always remain popular in the future. So definitely that is a position that you must have, right? You take the position that, yes, we're probably going to have this kind of um, dynamic in the years and decades to come. In that case, definitely go for it. Of course, uh, even if like, even if you're wrong, it doesn't mean or it doesn't have to mean that it's going gonna, it's gonna to be the end of the world, right? You can still probably still like enjoy um uh, i would argue like enjoy somewhat a pretty interesting return because i'm not convinced that palantir is going to just nosedive so that's for the long run in the short run the 25 levels definitely seems like a pretty hard ceiling it may or may not take a pretty long time for the price action to finally pierce through so in the meantime you can very slowly accumulate So I would give it, you know, at least a couple month or in fact, not that I give it a couple month, but let's say that I wouldn't be surprised um, if it takes like a couple month before things actually 
crystallize. So until then, I would say that I am ready to see it, you know, getting a lot of corrections and whatever. It shouldn't be like it, it, it shouldn't be uh, it shouldn't be too surprising. So given having said all this, I would recommend to slowly accumulate now. And to slowly, hmm, how can I put it? And to slowly prepare your position for the years to come, and to prepare to hold it for the long haul, right? Um, up to I would say ten to fifteen percent of your portfolio. 